guys and gals, welcome back to Las Vegas, baby. It's theCUBE, we are live at ClickWorld 2023. Lots of crazy animals here, about 2,000 or so, customers, partners, analysts, Lisa Martin, Dave Vellante. We're going to have a very fun and informational conversation next. You won't want to miss this one. We've got two guests. One of our alumni is back, Chris Powell, the Chief Marketing Officer at Click. Great to have you back. And Steph Robinson joins us, Click Manager at Customer JBS. Welcome, great to have you guys. Thank you, great to be here. So the elephant in the room, JBS, talk to us about it, what do you guys do? Well, so we are the biggest food company in the world, basically. Uh, I think we've actually taken that title now. Um, so we're a meat, meat producer, so chicken, pork, beef, from a lot of different animals. Excellent, talk yeah. to us a little bit about, before you worked with Click, what were some of the big challenges that you faced from a technology analytics integration perspective that you needed help to solve? So I, th I, think any, I think any business to succeed needs to be, ha be able to have an analytics platform. And one of the things that um, we found is, we, when I first started with JBS, we had ClickView. Um, and prior to that, they were using like a lot of Excel reporting. So everything was on spreadsheets, your data, in, your, um, data your data, um, I forgot the word. So you, you're not, you didn't have good data. Yeah. So you know, people could like put in any piece of data they want. So you, talk about the data quality. The yeah. data quality. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. So yeah. So we had challenges with data, around data quality. Um, I think when you when Click View first came to JBS, it was quite revolutionary. Um, and then the move to ClickSense, I think, made like a, a humongous difference for the company because we have like brought out a really collaborative space where um, any person in the company can develop. We, we, we give the data basically to the business and then the business use that data to answer their own business challenges. Self-service. Yeah, so it's totally self-service, thank you. And um, yeah, it's very, very exciting. So, Chris, talk a little bit about the, the challenges that JBS faced. Sounds like some dinosaurs back in the day. How common are those challenges that you're, that you're seeing at JBS and across organizations, across industries? You know, I think when, when we talk to customers like Steph, and, and a lot of customers are really challenged from the same aspects of what we all know. There's, there's a lot of data. Uh, the, it's raining cats and dogs of data, right? So there's so much data that's coming in, making sense of it, and the integration side of it is a big piece, but then it's really about moving into making sure you can trust it, and that's the quality right. piece. There's a huge trust factor as, as we're trying to automate so many of these uh, processes, understanding what you have is a big piece, but re really trusting it is another piece, and then analyzing it and then acting on it. Uh, and that's a big piece of what our CEO, Mike Capone, talked about today, and, and working with customers across that value chain instead of just one piece of it. Right. So Steph, what was the journey like, your data journey? I mean, I think back to the early days of big data, the, the Hadoop days, you know, you mentioned the little, you know, the, the animal that goes with Hadoop. I won't even bring it up, but you had different, <laughs> you know, the, the joke was zookeepers. You had lions and tigers and bears, bears. and you had to, right? Did, yeah. you, did you start there? We've obviously been around longer. So what's your journey been like and how did you end up with, with Click and where do you want to go? Um, so, so I think if, so the journey for me personally when I came to JBS started with ClickView. Um, from ClickView, when we kind of got into going into ClickSense, um, we had something like 900 applications that had been built by business users. So, and we're talking, we're not talking like someone who is, has any kind of IT training, like a, just a, a person who we personally trained within JBS to use the Click product because it, it's easy to train people to use it. It's very user friendly. And they had built apps in ClickView that we then needed to kind of move that over to ClickSense, 900 of them. So it was either my team, I have a six man team who would do that, or we would empower the business to build those apps in ClickSense, which is what we did. So we ran a whole project to kind of get every single developer to take their apps from Vue, move them over to Sense, improve them. Um, and, and so that, from there, we, we're now working, going into the cloud. So we're actually working now with ClickSaaS and we're going now business unit by business unit to move to SaaS because that really is the future. So it was sort of on-prem, and then in the cloud, the visualization piece, and, and now you're at the point of, we need more. You talked about the data quality, and that's where, I mean, it's sort of interesting, so, maps so, with your strategy. Yeah, and so what really, <laughs> what, where we're really at is, 
and I think Mike Capone said this today, is you know, a CEO really just wants an answer. Something's yeah. happened, he wants to be able to look and have an answer. And I think every person within the JBS environment is challenged to do that, and with Click we can do that. And I think moving into SaaS even better, as we get that up and running, we're going to be able to deliver that so that like the CEO or whoever it is at JBS has a question, can look, and there's his answer right there. And we're also talking real time, and then the demand for real time, um, I think with any business anywhere in the world now is huge, and Click is beginning to deliver that real time data. Um, we're also doing a journey through um, it with S4, which is going to like, integrate perfectly with what we're doing with Click and in the Click Cloud. Sounds like from a data perspective, what you're able to do leveraging Click and your partnership is really release the hounds of data, really democratizing it. Chris, talk about Click as that facilitator of really an organization being able to truly democratize data access so that yeah. all the business users, like, like Steph was talking about, right. have access to it to make decisions, because to your point, real-time data access is no longer a nice to have. That is required no, it's, it's yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's really two parts of the real time that you're talking about. The one, the one piece of it is actually that data coming in and the, and the real, you know, when you're, a lot of the organizations we work with that are trying to manage their overall supply chain, the real time nature of that has become, as we've all seen over the last couple of years, even more important. And then the other piece of it is when we talk to those individuals that are responsible for getting data into the hands of the people in the organization so they're actually using it, is a big piece of that is having a tool that can be easily extended. So applications don't have to be just all centrally created, but there's still that central control. So a lot of the customers that we talk to, one of the things they value most is the ability to have multiple people building applications, but still have the central control so that it's not the wild, wild west out there yeah. uh, with the data. Yeah. So this, I, this idea of real time is, is really interesting in supply chain, and it's got to be near and dear to your heart. Yeah. Uh, We've been using this mental model of data that we've been working on where it's like the Uber of data where you have people, places, things. It's a digital representation of your business where everything is coherent. It's kind of like data nirvana. But Chris, from a strategy standpoint, when you think about um, you know, the brand promise, if you will, of, of Click. So you started a Viz, you're doing way, way more now with data integration, data quality, bringing in the talent. Do you see that future as, as sort of near to midterm? where a, an organization can actually have that digital representation of their business, where we see supply chains today are still so messed up. Um, mm -hmm. And you, you, one would think that better data, better data quality, and more real time is part of the answer anyway. H how far away are we from this, this world? Look, I think some organizations are there. They, they've certainly made so much progress in the last couple of years that what seemed like it was pretty far away has, has gotten here pretty quickly, and that the, the the, the real-time nature of it, you know, the, we often joke about what real-time even means, right? Does it mean truly within seconds or is it within right. 15 minutes, within 30 minutes, within 24 hours? A, a lot of the organizations that we're working with, and, and to name another customer, Harman, that was on our main stage, right. talks about how with their supply chain, they were making decisions in previous that would take a week or two to make are now happening in minutes. So this is the difference that's happening is you can't make a supply chain decision in a weekly meeting, right? You have to be able to make it real time and, and I think those are the things that are already beginning to happen. Steph, talk a little bit about from your perspective, you know, when we talk about real time, the access to that data, how, what are some of the, the big outcomes? Because we all, you know, we've been talking, we've got Harman coming on and, and uh, later today, we saw all those, you know, customer logos, customers on stage this morning, talking about like big business outcomes, improving revenue, things like that. What are some of the big outcomes, business-wise, that Click has <laughs> enabled for you guys? So, um, there's a lot. Some of the ones I think that are very near and dear to my heart is um, quality. When you're dealing with a, a meat industry, quality is very, very important. Right. I mean, we, we can track with our applications uh, refrigerator temperatures, um, what's actually happening on the chain. We also use, um, we also integrate with a data science platform. So we also, we have some, some data that's coming in where we're actually visualizing the the supply chain of meat going through and making sure that it's, it's actually correct and that the yields are correct. And that does impact the bottom line. So you know, if you're able to track that and see exactly what's happening within a plant, and we, you know, we're, we're, we're talking, we're talking uh, meat, we're talking animals. Right. Um, 
you know, you, that, that will impact at how much money a company's making. Right. And I think JBS, despite, um, you know, tough times in the world, is that the revenue is in, increasing and JBS continues to expand. Uh, um, I, I think another area where, we, where it's, it's pretty phenomenal is um, on in inventory, like the, the ability to track inventory yeah. across like all the different plants and the different areas. So, um, and, and again, that always affects the bottom line. Right. Excellent. Chris, I want to talk a little bit about, uh, I, I noticed that, that staff in JBS is a click luminary. Talk a little yeah. bit about the click luminary program and then we'll talk a little bit stuff to you, but I'd love to understand from your perspective, what, what does a click luminary embody? Well, look, the, uh, I think, our luminary program is something we value tremendously because it's part of the culture of what we try to represent. Our chief product officer is going to be talking about how much of our innovation comes from working with our customers. Yeah. And that's really at the heart of the luminary program. It's 50 customers from around the world uh, that are really helping us understand what their needs are, uh, how we can change and adapt. And that's what's kept us so relevant, I think, over the years. Our 30th anniversary this year the way the companies stay relevant is by listening to their customers. Absolutely. And, and, and our last like one minute step, what does that mean to you to be a Click Luminary in terms of being able to be influential in the direction this company is going? Well, first of all, I'm very honored to be a Luminary, but I also, I really take it seriously because I, being on the business side, I recognize that the guys at Click, they're not in the day-to-day -day business, and I am. So I know I can say, hey, this is what works, this isn't what works. Even if it's down to how like an interface is designed, I can look at that and go, you know, it's going to be better this way, and I have a voice within Click, and they, and they listen. And you know, we work together in partnership to improve the product from, the, from what happens on the business side. So I feel like I'm a bit of a champion for businesses to Click. That's awesome. And I love it. Yeah. That's fantastic. Uh, well, I think, you know, we, we, all, we always love to have customer stories on theCUBE. I, I, I know I've, as a marketer, I've thought for years, there's no better brand validation than the voice of the customer yeah. really articulating, but to have that symbiotic relationship is even more special. We so appreciate you both coming on the program, really sharing what Click and JBS are doing together. Right. We can't wait to see what goes on ahead, and good luck on your talk. Yes, thank you. If anyone wants Thanks to come guys. to the talk, it's going to be very exciting and a what lot time? of fun. 4 p.m.? 4, 4 p.m., theater you're here, two. 4 p.m., theater two, you can It'll catch It'll be a stuff. lot of fun. All yes. right, guys, thank you so much. Thank we you. appreciate it. Okay. For our guests and Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin, and you're watching theCUBE live from Click World 2023. Stick around, we'll be right back with our next guest.